Scotty Elkon with Silly Film News here at the Dallas International Film Festival, and we're here with the man behind Stradstyle. Hi, how are you? Yeah. Uh, my name is Stefan Avalos, and uh, Stradstyle is my movie, and I am the director, producer, filmmaker, editor. I washed some dishes, did it all. Well, let's let's talk. You were you were doing another project completely about violins, and then you met Danny, or you found out about Danny. Yeah, yeah. I was doing, um, I had been shooting a, a violin documentary uh, since probably about 2012, and it was a very different movie, a very broad sort of documentary about this general, this obsession with these, these fine 300-year-old violins. And, and it's going to be, a, I think it's going to be a very interesting movie, but much drier, different movie. And I heard about this guy in the middle of nowhere, Ohio, uh, <laughs> via somebody who knew somebody in the Columbus Symphony Orchestra. And they're like, you got to meet this guy. He's got, you know, vi- tattoos of violinists, and he does magic in his garage, and he's totally obsessed. And so, yeah, it sounds like it'll be a fun five-minute sort of, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, blurb within the movie. And uh, I, I went out there, and it really is the middle of nowhere. And um, and within like half an hour, I was just like, man, this, this guy's this guy's a movie. This is this is the movie. So I put, you know, everything aside and focused on him. Now to kind of go back into your past, mm-hmm. you have a very strong musical past. And- yeah. Yeah, I do. Uh, actually, I, I was a former classical violinist, uh, so I, I played professionally. And uh, so I've, I spent a lifetime with a violin. I mean, I started when I was two and a half. And, uh, you know, and, and played for many years. So, so I, I know the world well, uh, the, vi- the violin world, yeah. You know, we were chatting about cameras and stuff, and I, I just want to mention for the cameras, I love the fact that you're historic for for Khan because you were the first digital screening that they had with the uh, last broadcast. That's correct at the Cannes Film Festival. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a pretty surreal time, and that was a time when everybody was like, everyone was like, oh, what, what are you guys doing? You know, it's such a waste. <laughs> you, know, you know, film and Kodak was like looking down their nose at us, and it was, but it was a crazy time. And, uh, and here we it, are. It's amazing how the world's changed. Mm-hmm. Like it's yeah. flipped on, and you. I think you mentioned this in an interview. You might not have been able to do this film if it wasn't for modern cameras and yeah. you know battery packs and battery yeah. powered material. Yeah, yeah, just because no, of where he lived. Y- everything about uh, there's uh, where he lives. His power, the power situation in his house would have made lighting it like really pretty dangerously impossible with like the old tungsten lights. Um, but also because I was basically a crew of one, yeah. you know, little camera. I mean, I got it all rigged out, so it wasn't quite so little anymore, uh, you know, and dollies and sliders and, you know, microphones, but I could do all that myself, which was great, and uh, not having to change out loads of film all the time, or even tape, you know, I was shooting this all to hard drive, so it was, it was great, I mean, you know, yeah, these cameras are what, what filmmakers have been dreaming about forever, you know, so it was great, yeah. Can we talk about, not only where he lives, but that, um, well, it's a farmhouse, it's a mm-hmm. farm. Um, about working in that space, the thing looks massive and huge, and um, it, it seems like its own little character to the film. I mean, it's it's part of the film, definitely. Yeah, that's 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 a really good point. Yeah, it's yeah, I live, it's an enormous house. The, the house is like forty three hundred square feet, wow. and uh, it's this old farmhouse from eighteen fifty three. Uh, it's been in the family, <clears throat> and um, you know he 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 lives kind of in a state of poverty, so it's kind of falling apart, you know, and 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 um, and and there's no heat in the winter, there's no air conditioning in the summer. It's you know these these temperature extremes. So um, I would be inside, we'd be talking, and, you know, our, there'd be you know fog coming out of our <laughs> breath. It was just it was crazy, and uh, and then you know there's some blizzards, so we're out there in the blizzards, and it was it was it was pretty wild. Um, and it, it is an amazing, it is an amazing character unto itself because it is such an old place, and it's uh, and the, the furnishings and stuff are so Victorian. And he, in a way, is such a guy that is sort of out of time, uh, even though <clears throat> he uses social media and Facebook to sort of communicate with the outside world, which is how he discovers uh, this violinist that he you know that he convinces <laughs> that he can make him a violin. So it's this real kind of, you know, sort of merging of old and new, which was really intriguing. Can you talk about that violinist? Mm-hmm. Um, and, cause I'm guessing, I mean, you started out with Danny and mm-hmm. did you know you were gonna be able to get that other part of the film? No, no. Wow. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, when, when I started shooting with Danny, um, he was, he's an amazing character. I mean, the guy's entertaining beyond belief. He makes you laugh, just, you know, he, he's, a, he's a great guy. Uh, I had no idea that, I, I didn't have a story per se. Um, I actually thought, well, you know what? 
because I had met a lot of great violinists, I thought, you know, maybe I can do a video, a film about Danny making a violin, and then maybe we can find somebody to play it, and then they can sort of critique it, and what he needs to do to, you know, sort of, move, you know, make another, you know, something like along those lines. And it was um, into shooting that, that, that Danny uh, was, um, became friends, virtual friends on the internet with Raz Van Stoika, who is this amazing concert violinist in Europe. And uh, so Danny, you know, called me up. I was actually back in L.A. at the time, and he's like, hey, man, um, you know, there's this guy. I'm going to make a violin for him uh, in Europe. And I was like, oh, this is so great. So, so you know, so that's when, that's when really I was like, all right, we, we've got a great story here. So, you know, so you see him in the, in the movie, you know, he's telling the story. And I had the internet logs mm -hmm. that he had, you know, had with him. And so, uh, and then we moved forward from there. About structuring the film, um, let's start with the very beginning, because that's... <laughs> That opening sequence of, of the violin, him throwing it into the fires, like, yeah. it was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. But I, I completely went into the film like, whoa, this is going to be like really sad for this dude. Like, right. what's going on? Right. Why, why that shot? I mean, it, it looks great. Yeah, it's, it is a beautiful shot. Um, yeah, he's, he's burning the mold that, mm -hmm. he, that he made the violin with. Well, you know, we don't know if he's going to succeed or not. We don't know, I mean, throughout the movie if he's going to fail or succeed. And, and, and I'm leaving that to the audience to see because because you really don't know what's going to happen. And, mm. and certainly when we start the movie, um, I wanted to leave it out of mystery. Uh, and and it, is, I mean, it, was, it is a mystery, really, right to the end. You know, it is uh, what happens. And, so, and also the mold is so representative of, and that's part of what he does. He really, he, he really did this. Uh, he, he, he burned the mold. Mm. Um, so you know, I wanted to get it all. And it has, it's amazing because he put all this wax on the name of the mold. And, in the heat, it all just melted. It looks like blood running down the mold, and that was, that just happened. I mean, I couldn't have planned that, you know. So that was one of those moments. And when that happened, I, I was like, "This is the opening shot of the movie," you know. It's um, because I thought it would sort of set, yeah, it would set your mind in a lot of ways, you know, as to what's going to happen because mm -hmm. it's certainly, it might not be a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, can we talk about uh, the slam dance experience mm -hmm. and the amazing reaction? Because you guys. Did a great job there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Slam, Slam Dance is a great festival, and um, you know, uh, any first-time filmmaker that can get the Slam Dance fan <laughs> go that. You know, that, that's a great way to sort of meet meet the world um, of film. And uh, yeah, we were we were very lucky. It, there was a great reaction, and uh, and the movie won the uh, the jury award and the audience award for best feature documentary there, which was really nice. I mean, when I went there, and this sounds, you know, it's so funny because I've heard other people say this, and it always sounds so cheesy and so I don't know disingenuous. Like you're like, oh, the awards don't matter. But you know, honestly, when when I got into into Slam Dance with this movie, um, I was like, that's great. You know, the, I wasn't thinking about the awards or anything for me at all. I mean, truly. So when the awards night came along, I, I was, I, 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 we were all winners, man. We got into slam dance, you know. So, so when, it, when I won, that was, um, that was really nice. But, uh, but just getting into slam dance was, was really cool. So. What does it mean for the life of the film festival? Because you, you, you start the circuit at the very beginning. I mean, mm -hmm. Sundance and Slam Dance are beginning of the year and it's it, it, it can kick off a wonderful hopeful yeah. you know not just a getting the film sold or anything like that but just it can start the festival circuit really nicely for you I mean that has to have been something special that you, yeah. you're gonna start at the beginning yeah yeah well slam dance was our premiere mm -hmm. um, and uh, and it has opened up the doors yeah for for um, I mean you know we got a great agent out of it but uh, yeah we've been doing a lot of festivals since and um, and, and quite a few came directly from Slam Dance, and, and they continue to, you know, I mean, like, this, this is an important festival. So, you know, who knows, we'll see it here that will lead to something else and something else. So uh, we've been on the road pretty steadily. Martha's Vineyard, Salem, um, I just got back from Sonoma like 36 hours ago, <laughs> 24 hours ago. Uh, now here in Dallas, a couple weeks Florida, we're going to Hot Docs in Toronto. Uh, and then, you know, Taromina in Sicily and, you know, Mendocino, Mammoth. Yeah, there's a lot of festivals coming down the pike, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I know um, for, for Dallas in particular, James and, and John Wildman <coughs> noticed it at Slam Dance, and that's mm -hmm. what made them really want the film. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have a really strong documentary uh, showcase this year with, with What Lies and Trophy and this. I mean, award winning mm -hmm. films are, are coming. Um, can you talk about? Working in that documentary world and, and maybe what 
filmmakers you look to or, or maybe you just you know admire that, that help you in, in your journey? Sure, yeah. Well, you know, interestingly, this is actually my first feature documentary. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of short form documentary work and I've made narrative features. Mm -hmm. uh, this was actually my first feature doc, which was why I was eligible for Slamdance because it is a first time you know, filmmaker uh, 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 festival. Um, but I've loved documentaries and I, and I know the genre quite well. Um, my, my personal, f the guys who I think are really most important, the guys I like to emulate more, most are the guys who sort of really stay out of the movie the most as possible. <clears throat> Frederick Wiseman, for instance, uh, The Maisels. And in this, in this movie, I was definitely trying to sort of follow in their sort of footsteps. Um, when I made the last broadcast, which was a mock doc, you know, we were actually trying to sort of go, okay, how, how sort of heavy-handed can we, like, it was a commentary on sort of television. Um, and actually, that movie was a very early mock doc. And, um, and in that movie, uh, I, we were actually very influenced by L.M. Kit Carson and David Holzman's Diary, which is actually, I know, uh, at this festival this year. And I had a chance to meet uh, Ellen K. Carson in Austin uh, in 1999, which was really cool. So, so that, was, that was another very influential movie, actually, David Holzman's Diary, which I saw is, is, is here this year. Yeah, they're playing at the so, Texas yeah. Theater. Yeah, and it, you know, there was a time that, was movie, that movie was impossible to see. Like, mm -hmm. you couldn't see it. And I, I saw it in school, and you know, it was just great. But for me, uh, especially on this one, um, I would say the Maisels and Frederick Wiseman were the were the big, the big influential sort of you know, the giants of do the documentary world that I was hoping to sort of be able to you know emulate to a point in their style. How much uh, are you the same or different when it's jumping from you know your short doc work on TV or or you know feature film to to now this? Well, the short doc stuff on TV generally has a very um, predetermined. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, storyline that's going to go. So you know, so sometimes it's a little bit less documentary than you'd want it to be. Um, and when I do a narrative, I'm <clears throat> I'm actually quite disciplined in the way I go about it. Uh, I'm 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 I don't freeform a narrative film at all. Um, with this movie, I really and it was a struggle sometimes. I really worked hard to sort of just let what happens happen. You know, and not tr you know to not sort of be uh, you know manipulating a scene which was difficult as a narrative filmmaker. Uh, and it took some doing, but it was actually quite cathartic once I got into it, you know. And, and, and Danny, I mean, <clears throat> you know, he had a mission, make a violin, but, but Danny has a lot of stuff going on in his head. So, you know, he would shift gears a lot, and I'd be there with the camera thing, I was like, dude, you gotta make the violin. <laughs> you should be working on this violin. And I was like, just keep, and just let him go and <laughs> do whatever. So, so that was kind of fun, but it, it was also pretty nerve wracking. Well, I've got to ask then, <laughs> how impactful is this on what you want to do from here on out? I mean, do you feel that you want to jump back into that documentary world or do you think you'll go back into to narrative? Well, the next projects I have, uh, I have a couple narrative projects and I actually have a couple documentary projects. Right now, when, I'm, when people ask me what's next and I tell them the stories, there is a documentary project that everyone's, everyone's eyes just light up when I, when, I, when I tell them the premise. So the next one may very well be another documentary. We'll see. Wow, yeah, very cool. Yeah. Um, well, I've got to ask, being able to take this cross country mm -hmm. outside into to Europe, mm -hmm. um, what are you looking for when you go to the different audiences? I mean, obviously, I think Diff's a very different audience in the slam dance mm -hmm. feel, but mm -hmm. what, what are you hoping to get from each different audience experience? Well, I. I hope to touch them emotionally with a movie. And so far, um, it's interesting because, yeah, for as different as the people are in, in, in the world, in the country, the reactions to the movie have been pretty much the same, which are very positive. And, uh, and, and you know, the movie, a lot of, there are, from several places in the world, you know, people have said, like, this movie stressed me out more than any horror movie I've ever seen. Um, and people are laughing and they're crying and, you know, and the, the movie gets very specific sort of laughs, you know, in different places, which is great. I mean, as a filmmaker, you're always like, okay, is the audience going to go? Is it, yeah! <laughs> you know, or, uh. and, um, but, but the reaction has been good. And I think there's a reason for that, and that is that it's about the human condition, you know. I mean, Danny represents all of us in a way. I mean, this movie's about a violin maker, but it, he could have been a race car, a, a dreaming about making a race car or building a beautiful house. You know, it could have been about anything. And, and I think that we all can relate to that. It doesn't matter where we live, you know. I mean, we all, we all want to do something great. And we want to be remembered and we want to be respected and admired and we want to be loved and we feel loneliness and pain and, you know, 
all of that is us, you know, so. What about being, I know this is, you haven't been there yet, but taking this overseas, and in particular Italy, mm -hmm. and um, do you think that'll be just a weird kind of nostalgic feel of just your experience knowing the violin so well, but also the connection directly to a place where a lot of these, you mm -hmm. know, this whole thing started? Yeah, I'm. I'm very much looking forward to see. To, well, to going back to going to Italy, going back to Italy, and and um, it will be interesting to see how it plays there. I, I think they're going to react to it well. I think there's going to be some laughs that aren't as strong in the United States that will be much stronger in Italy uh, for sure. That's that's one thing I think that will be different. Um, um, but uh, yeah, I, I, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how it plays there. It'll be interesting. Wow. So, yeah. So, do you mind giving us a tease of what this next documentary? Can you give us anything on it? Um, yeah, I think I can actually. Yeah, this friend of mine. Um, you know, a lot of people come to you with, "Hey, I got an idea for a movie about something that happened." Not generally. This friend of mine that I knew way back when in high school, um, normal guy, not a conspiracy kind of guy, whatever. Uh, he came to me and he's like, "You know, um, I got this. I got this feeling." And he presented me with all this sort of paperwork and information and research he'd done on this. And I looked at it, I was like, this guy might be right about what, he's, what he thinks. He's like, you know, I think that my uncle, who's not alive anymore, who lived in, in Oregon, was D.B. Cooper. So, <laughs> and, and like I said, I was looking at the information, I'm like, you know, could be, could be true. Wow. So, yeah, so, so you know, we're going to explore that and see what happens. And I'm hoping to do, you know, total reenactments, jumping out of an airplane and, you know, the whole works. So. That would be crazy. Yeah, right? Wow. Well, so, yeah. you know, it's a real pleasure to have you come and bring mm -hmm. the, the film here. I know uh, when I talked to James and, and John before the festival started, mm -hmm. I was like, so what, what film should I take an eye on? They're like, well, Strad Style by far is going to be one of the coolest, interesting, weird docs you've uh, ever excellent. seen. Yeah. Um, so thank you for bringing it to Dallas, thank and uh, I hope you get to see David Holzman in the Texas theater. Something historical about that, and I mean Kit Carson's mm -hmm. is nostalgic because he he Dallas is, was his home. So mm -hmm. I mean it's definitely uh, an extension of him. We're giving David Gordon Green the award, so it's so great to hear that you loved him because yeah. he's such a part of our festival. Thank you, so much. Thank you very much.